VLOOKUP really sucks. I mean, there are so many things that it does wrong. It kind of can't handle errors very well. You can't look backwards. You can only look forwards. You need HLOOKUP if you want something different. If you add in a new column, then suddenly all the formula breaks here. And also, you just can't handle duplicates. So there needs to be another formula to do that. You can't handle non-matches. Or what do you do with non-matches? Do you want to exclude them? Do you want to have all the non-matches from both columns? You can't change that with VLOOKUP. And then if it's misspelled like Brazil with an S or an Z, that is not going to match it with VLOOKUP either. There are ways around this in Excel. And finally, if you have something with different granularity levels like continent and then country, VLOOKUP can't handle this one very well either. So there are loads of aspects within Excel that I'm going to show you that kind of replace the need for VLOOKUP starting with XLOOKUP that everyone should know. Let's look at that. My name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And if you want to follow along, then you can download a copy of this workbook. The link is in, in the description. Let's get started. So to do a VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, press tab to lock that in. Lookup value is India. Comma table array is going to be the country column right until the end. In this case, it's only two. Press F4 so that when you scroll down, they keep in place. Column index number, this is one, this is two. So write two, comma, and then do false or do true. You had to do this as false. Otherwise, it would give you often wrong answers. Um, in this case, it's only worked for three of them because India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Nigeria are not here. And it gives you NA. There's no real way around that. Now, uh, if you want to format these numbers, you can. But XLOOKUP, immediately better. Not only easier, but also more flexible. So equals XLOOKUP. Lookup value is country lookup array. This is just going to be the column with the word country in it. F4 to lock that in. Comma return array is just going to be the column with area in. And then if I just close my brackets there, it's going to press NA. And it does the same as the original one, but just with a little bit more. But I have my if not found, so I can press comma and zero, and then it can just show me zero if it's not found, or comma and blank or something like that as well. So if I make this bigger, let's see some other stuff it can do. So if I do equals X lookup, then my lookup value is this. Let's move this out the way. And then comma, my lookup array is going to be this one, the country column, comma, and my return array is just median age. And it doesn't matter that that is looking right to left or left to right because I'm just specifying the column, press F4, and then comma, if not found, you can do two speech marks to have a blank, perfect. And if I drag it down, it works as it is expected to. So this is an XLOOKUP. And by the way, if I was to insert a new column, the VLOOKUP breaks, the XLOOKUP doesn't break. XLOOKUP can also look in both directions, horizontal and vertical. You don't need that pesky false or zero at the end to make sure that it works without sorting your data first. So that is kind of how it starts off. But let's look at some other options. The duplicates. So what happens if you want to look up with duplicates? So here I have USA twice. And when I get my population, I want to add up these two together. And when I get my regions, I want to list out USA, comma, Puerto Rico. The other ones are all mapping one to one. But here, there are two USAs. So what I can do is I can do equals text join. And then my delimiter is going to be speech marks. Let's do space ampersand space speech marks, comma, ignore empty, true. So you can double click that or press tab. You always want to do true most of the time. And then here we're going to do an if formula. So this is a more advanced formula for sure. So if this cell equals this cell, F4, then return this cell, F4. Otherwise return two speech marks, blank, blank. Close your brackets for the if function. Close your brackets for text join. And then if I drag it down, I get the ones I'm looking for, USA and Puerto Rico. So it is able to deal with duplicates. Population, here you would need a sum ifs. So sum ifs, sum range is going to be this range, F4 from the other table, comma criteria range is going to be this one from the country table, F4, comma, and criteria is going to be this one. And it's going to be zero if it's not there. And you drag it down and you get these things like that. Great. So this is how you can uh, deal with that aspect of it. 
Next, we're going to look at what happens when you have non-matches. So here, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Nigeria, the pink ones, these are non-matches. Now with the VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, it will keep them in the table, but just have an NA error next to them, or maybe a zero if we choose to replace it. However, what about if you want another thing happening? What about if you want a table that just has the matching rows? So just these colored ones. What about if you want a table that has all the rows? So it has these seven and it also has Russia and Canada. Or what about if we just want to test which ones are in one table, but not in another table? Something that happens very often in Excel. So we want to return a table that has just the pink ones. Well, you can do all of those with Power Query. The other thing you can do with Power Query is you can match Brazil with a Z to Brazil with an S. I'm gonna show you how to do all of those things. To get Power Query started, you select your data, you go to the data tab and you choose from table or range. It will ask you to do this, press okay. So it's created a table called table two. I can right click and rename that. This is going to be populations and then I can close and load. So now it's created a new worksheet with our population data. We actually don't need this for this instance, so I can delete it. And then here it says connection only. So the query is still there, but it's not loading, which is what I want. Let's do it again. In this case, we're not going to create a table. Now the trick is if you go to this thing called the name box and you could say countries by area, now you're giving this range a name. You can't have spaces, so you need to do underscores. Now, if you go data from table or range, it's not going to create a table. Now what we can do is we have merge queries. So I'm going to choose to merge queries as new. And with merge queries as new, we can click on this box and we can say population. We need to do is click on the country and then control click on the second country. And then you can press okay. And that has created this extra column and then you can expand it. And now it's doing kind of like a VLOOKUP was, it's only giving you the results to the matching rows, which are these two. Brazil has an S, not a Z, so that didn't quite work. But if I go back to my merge queries, and you can get to that by double clicking on the source. So here's the source, and I can then, if I want to, choose the join kind. So as I said before, you can have all rows from both tables, and this will include all the ones that are in the other table, not in this one. You can have only the matching rows. So let's look at that one. Or you can have rows only in the first table, not in the second table. The ones that are both right, I tend to not use these because if you want that, you can get to the same result by just switching this. And it's just a little bit cleaner if you always go with lefts and fulls. So let's look at inner first. So if I press OK, this has reduced it back to the only two that are matching. If I go over here and I choose full outer, it's going to initially put in five, add in null, which represents one or more columns, one or more rows. If I press plus, I can press okay. And if I press insert, it is going to add a new step here. But if you dismiss that, you'll see that this is how it looks, where it now has 10 rows because it's matched these two only, got Brazil and Brazil there, and these ones it hasn't matched. So then what you can do, note that my 216 is not a number, it's a text, but yeah, that's all you should have, but that could be that. The other one that I really like is left anti. Press OK. And here you'll see the ones that are non-matching. As we know, Brazil does actually have a corresponding value. So how can we get Brazil to match? Well, if you go back in here, then if you go to use fuzzy matching to perform the merge, fuzzy matching options, and here you can say, just press OK with the defaults, and now it has been able to match Brazil, and we know that because it's disappeared. If I go back to the source, and I choose inner, I will get that one. Now, what else have we got in these options? In fuzzy matching options. So you can give it a similarity threshold optional. So the default is 0 0.8, as it says, but you can say you want it to look for anything that is 0.2. I think for this one, it will not find anything more, but yeah, it'll just be three out of five. I have another video where I go into more detail about this, but it is worth knowing. Ignore case, uh, that is uppercase to lowercase, and 
ignore this as spaces, and then maximum number of matches if you don't want it to expand, for example. Next up, we have transformation table. And this is like if you had USA here, but here it said United States, and you added a new table that you also imported into your Power Query that said United States and USA are the same. We don't tend to use that too often, but you can if you want something that is more manual to be an intermediary table to translate it. So in this case, yeah, we can just leave it as default because we really just want to get that Brazil version coming. There we go. And then we can expand it like that. And it's already done it there. So I can just click on this next step. Some of you may be very familiar with Power Query. Some of you may not. You don't even need to expand that one. You can even go back to this cog or double click it and pick our country because you've already got it there if you're doing an inner join. So that is how you can do it. And by the way, you also have merge queries without the and as new one. And what that will do will be, it just does it in the same query. So if I do populations here, I can click on that and click on that. And then I can expand it and it does it in the same query and not in this one. There we go. And instead, it's giving me an error because this one is sourcing the other one, but it's already got the same name. If I want to get rid of that area, error, I just need to say population and something else. So it's not the same. There we go. You can also rename this. So I'm going to say this is combined. And then if I close and load, it's going to load both of those. What you probably want to happen if you are going to use merging queries a lot is to go to your data, get data, and then query options. And then in data load, you want to use this one. Specify custom default load settings and untick both of those. That way it won't load the ones that you don't need. Because in this case, it's loaded this table, which I don't need that because it's kind of my, just my source table. So I just need one output. And yeah, this way you can choose what to load by right-clicking on one and choosing load two. And then you can say which one you do want to load, but by default, it's not loading. So that's the one that I find works better. Another thing for Power Query, what about if we want to merge based on two columns? So this one is London, UK, London, UK. So this one should be Jack, whereas this one should be Harry. And you've got Paris, France, Paris, USA. So you've got duplicates in this, but you can match based on two columns. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. One of them is if I insert a row, control shift plus, I can write equals this one and this one, and then I can drag it down. And then here I can do the same, equals this one and this one, and then I can drag it down. And now I can use an X lookup just to match it. Based on those, I'm not gonna go through that in this, but it's the same idea. But let's go through another example without doing that, because sometimes you are unable to do that, also with Power Query. So if you go to Data from Table Arrange, press OK. Immediately close your Power Query Editor, and then you'll see it's not loaded it. It's showing me just as connection only. It is good practice if you are going to use the table to first name your table. So if you manually go to Insert Table, press OK, then you go to Table Design and you rename it. So this is going to be city names, and then you go to data and from table range. So it's more clicks, but it's good practice to do that because here I can rename it in Power Query, but that won't rename the original table. So I could right click and rename and choose here cities. Now, how do I merge these? It's actually pretty easy. What you do, if you want it in the original table, let's just go merge queries and let's choose city names. And then if I hold down city and then control hold down country, City, control, hold down country. So hold down control as you're doing it, then it does number one, number two. They could be in a different order, depending on which one you click. If I do that one and then hold down control and do that one, but they need to match. One needs to match one, two needs to match two. And then I can choose the join kind as we saw before and fuzzy matching if I want to. But if I expand this, this then will be able to take the right name. There you go. And Paris USA is not in the original list, as we can see here. And that's why it's giving me a blank value. This is how Power Query handles non-matches if you do the left outer join. If we wanted to remove these, we could do an inner join. And if we wanted to have just this one, we could do a anti-join. Close and load. And now if I want this one to show me cities with the names in, I can right click and go to load two, and I can choose a table 
in this worksheet here. You will create a table using Excel's table structure. If you're not using those, then I'll point you to another video on my channel because they are extremely useful. Last up, let's go to Power Pivot. Now, Power Pivot allows you to join tables like you would in a database. So in order to do this, you do need to have tables. So insert table, press OK. Annoyingly, you can't change the table name until you've done it. So this will be my population countries and then do the same for this one. So this one will be insert table, press OK, and this one will be continents. And now what I can do is I can go to the data tab and choose this one. This is table relationships. You can go to new and you can click a table. So I'm going to choose the population countries and that is going to be the country column. So this one is going to match with this one. And then I'm going to choose the continents table and also match with the country column because they need to be the same. Now it does say which is the table, which is the related table. It doesn't matter which one you choose. If I'd have chosen this one to be continents, it would still work. What does matter is that one table needs to have unique values in one column that you're using to join, no duplicates. That is what is key. All right, and then I can close. And then to get something like this, what I can do is I can go to insert and then pivot table drop down, choose from data model, because this is going to be a power pivot table. So it is over here. Now here, I can see all the tables in my data, it only works with tables if you use Power Pivot. And what I can say is I can go to continents and choose continent, and I can go to population countries, choose population, and then it will add all of those together as need be to get to this answer. Africa is 224, that's actually the same because this is the, Nigeria is the only country in Africa in this list. And then you've got Americas, which is just going to be USA and Brazil. So that's this one and this one. And I can see that it's five, five, six, et cetera. And Asia makes up the rest. So this is it. By the way, <laughs> the top seven countries in the world make up already more than half the world, even though there are about 200 countries, just pretty crazy. All right, so that is a whistle software. I do have further videos on power pivots and table relationships and on text join if and on next look up. This is something you want to delve into more. I hope you've enjoyed that. This was a whistle stop tour. Thanks for watching.